he he lived a very rich life. He did a lot of different things. He started off in the CFL coming out of Cal in 59. He was drafted by Washington. I saw yesterday that Washington drafted him around 18 and never even contacted him. So he said, I guess they don't want me. He went to play in Canada. And he did well in Canada, won a Grey Cup there with the BC Lions. First year for Bud Grant, 67. That was the first year post Fran Tarkin. He'd been traded to the Giants. They brought in Joe Cap. And three years later, Super Bowl with Joe Cap. He had one of the handful of seven touchdown pass games in NFL history. He's right. on that list with Nick Foles, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, uh, why am I bl- George Blanda. Mm. Just a, a very eclectic group of guys in the seven touchdown pass in one game record book. And then after the 1969 season, he was a free agent. He didn't have a contract. He forced his way to the Patriots. They had to give up two first-round picks to get him. And then later, he filed a lawsuit against the NFL, challenging the language of the standard player contract. He thinks that derailed his career. He told Ron Rivera that. I spoke to him, uh, to Ron Rivera yesterday for about 15 minutes about Cap because Rivera played for Cap at Cal. Cal right. went, or Cap went on to be the head coach at Cal with no coaching experience. He became the head coach at Cal in 1982 with no coaching experience. And uh, Rivera went on and on about what an impact he had. They have shared Latino heritage, so that brought them together. Rivera's mother grew up in the same town as Cap did, so there was a connection there. And he just told some great Joe Cap stories. He was an actor. He was in The Longest Yard. He was the walking boss in The Longest Yard. He did a bunch of TV shows and movies, just a bunch of different things. He, I mean, life well lived, life enjoyed, lived to the fullest, and he also wasn't afraid to throw back a little tequila and throw hands when needed. No doubt about it. Or swing canes when needed. Right. <laughs> yeah. Do anything there. You're right. He was he was not afraid of confrontation. That's, I mean, that's how I learned about Joe Cap. Like, I, I can remember being a little kid going, wait, who's this, like, quarterback who – plays the position he kind of looks ugly and clunky but he gets it done and he's just tough and gritty and you know watching the old NFL films things when you watch the Vikings talk about you know they're hugging Joe Cap they loved him they loved him because he was he was football player not quarterback he was different that's that's you know what that story about him fighting in the locker room uh, or fighting outside the locker room about who lost the game which is comical right but look at that jump pass Look at some of the pictures we showed before. One of the things I first learned about Joe Cap and, and, and early on in my life, and my dad got to tell me, is, look, he didn't grab the laces. That's hilarious. He didn't grab laces to throw the ball. You know, so there's a lot of interesting nuances about him. Uh, but, yeah, gritty, tough, old-school football player who just was – you know, a workhorse and, you know, had a great career and was a great personality off of it and uh, sad to see, you know, a guy like that go. And his first year at Cal was the same year as the play, the Stanford band. The band is on the field play, the big game every year, the rivalry between Cal and Stanford. It ended with multiple laterals and the game was over and the Stanford band literally on the field trombone player got crashed into when the guy scored the touchdown so uh what a way to start your your college coaching career but he was there from 82 to 86 and he he actually when he took the cal job he said he would never drink tequila until cal got back to the rose bowl (laughs) right and cal has never gotten back to the rose bowl and i saw somewhere yesterday that at some point he just decided to to switch to rum. That's so, amazing. He's such a man of his word. He wasn't going to break that. For good. Right. <laughs> yeah. that, that, that's, uh, that shows you how stubborn and tough he was and a man of a word, man of man of his word that he was really. Um, but yeah, he's one of those, you know, you know, throwbacks, got the single bar on old school, tough leader type of quarterback, not necessarily sexy or you know the greatest uh highlight package in the world but man when it comes to leading a football team and having the respect of your locker room joe cap up there with anybody 
Well, it's that Bobby Lane look. It's that it's that Mac Jones at Alabama look where your uniform doesn't fit your right. Nothing fits your right. You right. just go out and you get it done. That's right. And that's right. kind of how it was. And good Lord, single bar face mask in those days. How did you emerge with any teeth? How did, I mean, how did he not have multiple fractures of his face in every game of any era of football? That's the era where I would not want to have just that meaningless single bar covering my face. You may as well have no bar and, and then have that single bar. Back in those days when they yeah, they the uh, bottom of the pile, stomp and kick and bite and shove and oh, do whatever yeah. they had to do. There was no my contact goodness. to the head that, rules. That's just, right. The the ultimate mark of toughness is to play football in that era with minimal protection. That is minimal protection. No, it, it really is. And I mean, gosh, you watch old old you know NFL films, things of that era. There's always forearms coming across the head, head slap. Of course, was a popular thing because of Deacon Jones. Yeah, it, it's kind of amazing. I mean. It, it's Joe Theismann wearing it in the mid '80s. That's still amazing. I mean, let alone back then. It, that's that's. Hey, quarterbacks want to see the field. Vision's important, but there's a time where you got to go. Okay, so are my teeth. They're important as well. Let me wear a little more extra protection wow. down here. <laughs> yeah, vision's important. I need to keep my eyes in the socket. <laughs> right. So let me right. at least wear something slightly more protective of my overall face. Than this, uh, this, this just meaningless. I, I wonder whether, I, I would assume by then there was a rule that everybody had to have a face mask because my guess would be Cap just would have played without one if he could have. Yeah. That yeah. the, the single He's bar was the type. thing worn by the guy who just didn't want to yeah. wear. A face okay, mask I'll put it on. I'll um, wear. Here's your face mask. Okay, sounds good. Right. Yeah, I, I think so. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.